Well, join us tonight to unpack these uh, developments and what this means uh, for Nigeria is Nick Agule, an energy expert and public affairs analyst. Uh, good to see you and thanks uh, for your time. These are a lot on the plate and many are excited. Per perhaps if we break it down, people will understand what it means uh, to plow in such uh, amount of money into the sector. Now, ExxonMobil, on one hand, one would have uh, thought that they were leaving, and that now again, you get to see that, no, they're also bringing some investment. How does this pan out with, first of all, divesting, SEPA taking over some of its, uh, uh, you know, investments here, and now they're coming back? Uh, thank you very much for the question. It's good news that we have ExxonMobil pledged to bring in such quantum of investment. $10 billion is not a joke. Mm. But let me serve a caveat before I go forward. I think it's becoming part of Nigeria to announce deals without the other partners saying the same thing. So before I came here, I actually went on to ExxonMobil's website in Nigeria here and at the corporate in the US in their news field to check if they too have announced this deal that Nigeria has announced. And unfortunately, I didn't see ExxonMobil announce it. Uh, the latest news they have on their news field is how they want to use biofuels to convert it into diesel so that we will have renewable diesel. And I felt that was really good. And then, of course, the, the, the news that followed that one was an agreement they signed with the, with the government of Abu Dhabi. But the Nigerian news was not there. But let's take it that, yes, indeed, this conversation happened, and ExxonMobil have pledged to bring in this money. It will be a good thing. Yes, ExxonMobil are exiting onshore, which is production on land. Mm -hmm. And just like all the other international oil companies, IOCs for short, they are all moving offshore. They started with shallow offshore. They are now in the deep offshore, going ultra deep offshore. Mm. So $10 billion is the kind of money you will need to develop a block offshore. Because the development of the block will come in three stages. You first have to do exploration to check if there's oil there at the bottom of the sea and how much quantity of that oil is there. Mm. That will cost you a few billion dollars. And then when you find the oil, you're going to spend another couple of billions of dollars to develop the infrastructure. So sink the wells that will drag out the oil, then the infrastructure. Because you are on the Atlantic Ocean, you will not have a flow station. You won't have a terminal on land. So you're going to have a ship, a big massive ship called an FPSO, a floating production storage and offloading vessel. It will cost you a few billions of dollars, and then you set up all the production facilities before you achieve first oil. So that's so crude oil business is it's an expensive business. Very expensive. It's not, yeah, it, it doesn't come cheap. And long term too. Yes. And if all of this were anything to really go by, what does it mean for the Nigerian economy? And more importantly, does it signal uh, to the foreign investors that truly, as President Tinubu has said, Nigeria is open? you know, for business. And would you say that this is indicative of the fact that President Tinubu's, you know, traveling, you know, speaking to foreign investors and all of that is beginning to pay off, if all of this truly yes, were of, the case? Yes, of, of course. It will, it will be a big signal that uh, the current government is ready to do business. Because let's not forget, this particular field, the Owowo field that ExxonMobil is talking about, mm -hmm. It was discovered about eight years ago. That's when they found the, the crude oil, about 500 to 500 million barrels to a billion barrels of crude oil are estimated to be in that field. Right. But they haven't developed it because they were expecting A, B, and C from the Nigerian government, which was not forthcoming. Like what? So when you want to spend that kind of money, you <coughs> want to receive assurances in terms of guarantees about your investment and what will come out of it. Because, you know, that field is actually a joint venture between ExxonMobil, Chevron, Total, Nexin, an indigenous company, and even the NMPC, represented by MPDC. And you know that in joint ventures in Nigeria, the NMPC has been like a stumbling block 
because they are not funding their equity contributions as and yeah. when due. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a problem because you, you have a, a work program, a work program and budget, and things have to happen according to that order. You have to place your orders, you have to pay for them. And so if one partner is dragging their foot, it becomes a problem. So those are the kind of assurances that they'll be looking for. And perhaps I was not in that meeting, but I will assume that what was happening there is that the Exxon executives were trying to extract from the Nigerian government those assurances. Are you ready for us to come in? We can come in, but you need to ensure that things are moving smoothly for us. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's what now came out as the news. So it has to be Nigeria doing its own bit before that $10 billion okay. will come. That's what I would think. Mm. So well, before you go, because <laughs> I, I, I like to go back how you started, because uh, you did a, a bit of uh, journalism investigation for us before coming here. Well, thanks, by going to the, uh, the mobile uh, site. Yes, and I'm truly, uh, if you are now, we have some cherry news. Uh, it should be on uh, both ends. Uh, so yeah. now that it's not on, on the mobile side at the moment, uh, as we speak, uh, what does that mean for you? You've been a big player, you know, in the industry. Exciting news as this, and it's not on the man who's bringing the money. What does this mean? I wouldn't call myself a big player in the industry, even though I've worked for three IOCs. That is a fact. By all means, you are. Yeah, so I, I, I think that maybe going forward, Nigeria needs to take a step back and do things differently. If you have such an agreement, usually it's okay for the two sides to mount the podium and make a joint announcement. So like in this case, Nigeria's vice president would have said what he believes this agreement is, and then the Exxon officials Eight. would have said what they believe this agreement is, and then it's, it's very clear. But this idea that we say Emirates are coming, Emirates say we're not coming, mm -hmm. then Exxon Mobil is, is not really very tight. When exactly is it yeah. an agreement? Is it when, you know, we have a discussion and we say in principle, oh, I'm willing to bring in $10 billion into your economy yeah. and you're excited about it. Yeah. At that point, is it an agreement? Or when you put pen to paper? Yeah, it, you, you, say, you, yeah exactly. Um, you have to yeah. commit to what to, you are expected to do yeah. in paper. And like we heard, yeah. you know, the total gentleman, you know, mentioned at a forum where he actually stated that six billion dollars they were going to invest that in Angola. That came yeah. from the exactly yeah from the total Be because I've, I've been to Angola during <laughs> the time working for an I was I've been to Angola and truly because I've worked in the Nigeria oil and gas industry and then I went to work for an IOC at their global headquarters and therefore had oversight in the countries where they were operating I could see how business is facilitated elsewhere much more than is done here in Nigeria. So when we say ease of doing business, we really need to commit to it. You know, there are very basic things that elsewhere will just happen very easily. You know, and speaking of which, because sorry to cut you here because we really have to run, but speaking of which, uh, ease of doing business, uh, you, uh, have you started seeing that in uh, the NNPC? Because uh, that could be a, a a worry for some of these IOCs. You are setting me up to talk about the NNPC because to be honest, uh, with all due respect, I have a, a lot of good friends in NNPC. I know the competence that is in that organization. Mm. But I believe it's one of the biggest headaches of Nigeria today. And that is because even though it's an organization staffed with competent people, government bureaucracy is impacting on their work. Right. So that yeah. means NNPC is not being helped by government in a way that NNPCL can actually deliver for Nigerians. For NNPCL to work, President Tinubu just simply needs to take it outside of government bureaucracy mm. and make it like an LNG. That is the model that we need. Right. That's yes, a good so, place to exactly. leave it. Nick Agule, energy expert and public affairs analyst, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Mm -hmm.